Hi, in this video I'm going to discuss the analysis of variance. Now, we use the analysis of variance to compare the means of two or more population. Let's say I have uh, multiple branches and I want to know if the sales in these branches are or the salespeople performance in these branches are uh, equal to each other or uh, not, right? In this case, I could use um, uh, ANOVA analysis to perform uh, that comparison. Uh, in the past, we learned how to test the um, null hypothesis of mean 1 is equal to mean 2 through the t-test. So if you are doing a t-test uh, 2, basically mean comparison, it's a good idea to use the t-test rather than the uh, analysis of variance. Right? Uh, ANOVA uh, measures the variation between groups relative to variation within groups. What I mean with that is that, let's say I have the first branch, so we are looking at the uh, salespeople performance assigned to that branch, and then uh, salespeople in each branch compared to the other branches, right? So that is between groups and within groups uh, assessment. Now, uh, analysis of uh, variance uh, re relies on a couple of assumptions. One of them is that the data is randomly and independently obtained. Uh, which means basically we just went and just uh, asked for data or sampled the data. We discussed this one in the past. Uh, data needs to be normally distributed. Now, uh, F distribution is actually very uh, robust in terms of dealing with the data that's not normally distributed. But if your distribution like really far away from the normal distribution, you may want to consider um, some other analysis. And then the final one is that variances are equal for all these uh, populations or samples. Now, again, if the variances are not equal between uh, these branches or um, a group of sales employees in each branch, uh, it is not a big deal as long as we have the same number of, let's say, uh, salesperson in each uh, branch assigned for the analysis. If we have an um, unequal variance and the number of uh, salespeople are different or the observations are different in each branch, then we might run into a problem. In that case, a non-parametric test, and you should think about the chi-square, uh, would be a more appropriate test to see if there is any difference uh, between, uh, let's say, branches. Right. So I'm going to show an example here. And in this example, let's say we have um, employees and we decide to, to see, do an employee satisfaction survey. And these are the results. So we have college gradu graduates, graduate degrees uh, owners, and some college degree owners, right? And that could be two years degrees included, right? Uh, at the end, we have um, nine people with the deg college degree, uh, eight with the graduate degree and then seven with the um, college degree. Again, we are going to be careful about the third assumption. And if we think it's not going to be appropriate, we have to consider again the chi-square or some other test. Um, but uh, in this example, I'm just going to assume uh, the uh, data sample is good for us. Now, now for the ANOVA analysis, we run an F-test. That means we are looking at the uh, degrees of freedom and then the alpha value and degrees of freedom is basically the total number of observations here right and uh, nine plus eight plus seven minus the number of uh, factors uh, or categories here one two three so i have 24 uh, basically observation and three categories and that way i will end up with uh, 21 degrees of freedom uh, now, we can use, of course, the data analysis tool pack again for uh, ANOVA uh, using Excel. Uh, we are going to use the single factor because the only factor I'm considering is the education level, right? Uh, and that's why I'm using a single factor. Uh, you need to be cautious here. When you are selecting the data, uh, the columns needs to be adjacent to each other. For example, when I go back to here, if this is column A, this needs to be column B and column C. Uh, if you put an empty column between them, then the analysis is going to fail somehow. Uh, uh, you select the data, and if you have labels, you are going to put that one. 
and then finally enter the alpha value we are gonna use uh, five percent and then get the results right now here is a couple of uh, things we are doing an ANOVA analysis for single factor uh, college graduates there are nine of them the total is 31 and the average is uh, 3.44 something and then the variance for the college graduate is 1.027 in terms of employee satisfaction and uh, there are eight graduate degree owners and the total is 36 uh, and then uh, the average is 45 and that is basically 36 divided by 8 and finally the variance is 0.57 and then the some college uh, degree owners there are seven of them the total is 22 and then the average is 3.14 and the variance is 1.47 right what i'm testing here is again that my null hypothesis is that uh, average one uh, for gra uh, college graduates is equal to graduate degree uh, average and then that is equal to the average of some college now um, a visual check tells me that there is an issue here because uh, 4.5 seems to be uh, significantly higher than this but I don't have an evidence until I read this area now um, this between groups uh, sum of squares basically if I look at the average of college graduates uh, graduate degrees and some college and then uh, square those dif uh, differences between them I um, uh, to compared to the overall average then I will get 7.87 and uh, within group uh, difference is basically if I just uh, look at the uh, sum of squares uh, that is SI minus the average of that group and then just keep adding them up I will end up with 21 and this total is just some of them right uh, we are not doing hand calculations so that's why it is kind of uh, tricky to explain this but um, uh, you can just uh, check the f square test uh, within group and between group calculation it's a straightforward uh, calculation now between groups degrees of freedom is uh, two because i have three groups and n minus one is uh, the basically degrees of freedom and within groups i have a total of again 24 observations uh, 24 minus 3 is going to be um, 21 right um, this is uh, mean square errors and finally i have an f value and a p value and f critical value now in this case f value is uh, 3.92 and the critical value is 3.47 that tells me that i need to reject the null hypothesis right and i can also look into the p value um sometimes you may see f statistics here uh, p value is 0 0.0356 and that is less than the alpha value i set it up so that also tells me that uh, i need to reject the null hypothesis so what i'm saying is that uh, when i look at the employee satisfaction uh, there is some difference between the um, those with the college degree graduate degree and some uh, college degree uh, employees right and uh, if this was the branch example that I gave earlier and we come up with a similar result what I would say is that there is this performance difference between salespeople in each branch right so perhaps some branches really have some successful salespeople right compared to the other branches Right, uh, now the second part of this is that I'm going to talk uh, about the regression as an analysis of variance. Now we have done single um, reg single linear regression in the class and this is just the follow-up as I mentioned in the classroom. Uh, so we are going to conduct a test, ANOVA test uh, or F-test to determine if uh, basically an independent variable has a significant um, impact on the uh, dependent variable right in another word if I'm thinking about the y is equal to a plus bx is b significant enough it is different than zero basically right if uh, b is zero then uh, basically there is no relationship between that 
an independent and dependent variable so i need to find some other uh, metrics or vera uh, re way of uh, formulating this problem right uh, hopefully we are gonna say that uh, it is different than uh, zero so basically b needs to be a great uh, value other than zero and then there is a significant relationship between x and y right so uh, again formulating it and my null hypothesis is that the b value is equal to zero and if i tie this one to our in-class example we were talking about the uh, home size square feet and then the uh, market price right so null hypothesis is that beta is beta one is zero which means basically we are saying that home size is not a significant variable right and there is no impact of home size or square feet on the uh, market value of the house and our null hypothesis is that um, beta one is not zero that means uh, home size is a significant var uh, variable right uh, so uh, the homes uh, square feet it has an impact on the market value right uh, so when we do the test and I have might have shown you this table before in the class we got the p-value of uh, almost zero right uh, in this case again we are gonna reject the null hypothesis and what it tells me that at let's say my uh, degrees of I'm sorry level of significance is 5% alpha is 0 0.05 in that case alpha is greater than this value that means i'm gonna reject the null hypothesis and i can see this value <coughs> right here significance f this is the p value basically right uh, I, I mentioned earlier so significance f is the p value for the f test and it tells me that this is uh, 3.798 and uh, that is practically zero the alpha value whichever i use uh, even at the 99% confidence, uh, I will reject the null hypothesis and say that the square feet has a significant impact on the home value.